So, Apila, before we start, just a very quick questions because I, I think one of the first students are really nervous and preparing to start playing. Just want to ask you if you could just maybe um, remember something uh, Ms. DeLay would tell you and in just uh, briefly uh, bring us into this uh, Dorothy DeLay Masterclass series because I already explained that we dedicated this to her legacy. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, you know, I have a lot of stories uh, about Ms. DeLay and I reference Ms. DeLay multiple times during my master classes anywhere I am. Uh, so I'll just tell one story that I remember I came to Aspen one of those years in the early 90s and I haven't seen Ms. DeLay at that point for maybe two, three months. And I was extremely happy to see her. And I was walking with a friend of mine. And as always, you know, Miss DeLay, we secretly called her a queen. And she was always surrounded by a lot of people and a lot of students. And she looked at my friend in front of everybody and she says very loudly, intonation. And she walks away. And for the rest of that week, I thought to myself, you know, it could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I just want to say, you know, how much she valued uh, intonation and how much importance she put in intonation. And uh, she talked a lot about it, you know, and, you know, I think uh, this is also something that for all of us uh, is uh, somewhat uh, a scary uh, term and maybe even uh, something that we may be even paranoid about. Uh, it's always an exaggeration of what it really is, in my opinion. And in my opinion, you know, intonation, what it is, is just a reflex, really. It's something, you know, we don't think when we walk, we don't think when we need to brush our teeth. And uh, intonation is the same way. The more times you put your finger in the same spot, the more chances you're going to have that you're going to hit that note. Uh, Somebody asked, I just picked the last uh, question. What about warming up with scales, arpeggio, Kreutzer, and other etude book? Would you like to answer this? Uh, sure, yeah. Actually, uh, Kreutzer was uh, the one that I was going to mention as another, what is it, 42, right? There are 42 of them, I think. Uh, not, not specific, but you can mention anything. Oh, yeah, but uh, in terms of warm up, you know, I just like Caprice number two. You know, I think it's a fantastic Caprice, uh, Kreutzer etude, rather, not Caprice, right? So it's a. Kreutzer. Yes, yeah. With all different boings. With all different boings and also in different parts of the bow. Uh, you know, at, at the frog, at the tip, in the middle, different speeds, different strokes, every, everything, yeah, everything. Yes, absolutely. And I think the additions that I used to have as a kid actually suggested all those different strokes. Yeah, but you can come up even with a different one. And, you know, start up bow, start, you know, do it and dot it. Rhythms, very, very helpful. Uh, and uh, that's also, yeah, absolutely. I think the question is if it's a good warm up. Yeah, fantastic warm up. Yeah. yeah. Scales what about are... what about skills? Do you play skills? Uh, oh, you know what? I will have to confess that no, I don't. Not anymore. I regret this. I don't want anybody to be influenced by the fact that I don't do it myself. But I've done them for many, many years. And by the way, Miss Delay would tell all of her students that Shlomo was practicing scales for at least two, three hours every day. So, you know, I would have been curious to ask him uh, this question. Not anymore. He said he doesn't play anymore. Oh, so he, he played practice. You know, I can relate to this. In, yeah. I was growing up in St. Petersburg, in Leningrad, like you did. And my father is a violinist. My mother is a pianist. So I grew up. I had no choice of, uh, <laughs> of following certain rules. Uh, morning routine for me was at 7 in the morning before I, <laughs> I was going to, even to school. An hour before, and I had a long ride into to Distiletka to the special music school, almost 50 minutes by bus. So uh, every morning, my routine was at seven in the morning. I was waking up and I was playing scales, no matter what, for many years. And there's a great uh, discussion can be. I can relate to this whether there was all positive things, perhaps not, but the results of playing the scales, they would, they would show that that foundation many many years later because it's it's something one needs to go through 
and it has to be done at an early age. And then you or somebody else who is already established violinist and play beautifully can say, no, I don't play now. But at some point of your life, that was our routine. And you remember at our special schools, we had exams. Oh, it's exams. And I also mentioned in another webinar that I was asked to play scales after I won Paganini competition. Yeah. So there was no, no excuses. I still had to go uh, sometimes in the mid uh, session exam, play yeah, yeah. scale and the tutor or caprice, and it was the same in Moscow Conservatory. It was already after Tchaikovsky competition. I was also asked to play scales and caprice. Always. And I, I was told that, you know, all, yeah. all the professor, your uh, wonderful professor, uh, Andrei Korsakov, and there was a, there was a, there was a you know, amazing, uh, amazing uh, names who were at that time. They were sitting there, and actually I, when I played the exam, Korsakov was there too. And Tretikov and, and all those wonderful, wonderful uh, violinists, they would come to hear us playing etudes and and uh, and and scales. And actually, I was told that Kogan wouldn't miss Lenny Kogan. He wouldn't miss ever this kind of exams when students. I guess it came from Yasha Heifetz and his admiration to Yasha Heifetz because Heifetz was it was religion for him. And you know. I now also can uh, can uh, mean should confess that I don't play scales on a regular basis, but lately when I start going a little bit back and trying to refresh certain things and try to rethink certain things, even with Paganini caprices, then I realize that we, if we have time, if we know why we're playing scales, we're not playing scales to warm up, we're playing to scales to be honest with ourselves, especially when we have a career going and we play Tchaikovsky, like mentioned, and El Concertos hundreds of times, we're not going to pay attention on certain very basic things when we work because we're already flying far away. We're trying to go next step, more, be more, even more creative than we did last time. But we are human. We can overlook things. And this is a moment of honesty. You go to the scale, and it has nothing else. You have to be very honest to yourself. You listen to the intonation, to the good sound, string crossing shifts. And it's one of the most difficult thing to play the scale well, because you really have to be, you are naked. And this is a real and if refreshing. And you do that, then you are halfway through the first moment of Beethoven concerto. <laughs> I didn't think that way when I was learning because, because it was the big, uh, you know, jump for me to actually to go beyond that. But you're absolutely right. Some of the pieces, they're so simple, and then consist consist on, on, on. And somebody started playing Paganini Caprice number five. You said and having problems with the shifts. I said, you don't practice scales. You cannot play A minor or A major scale. So then you have to go and take care of the simple things, which are our obstacles, and there are just a few shifts, string crossing bow changes and intonation basically yes and then we start working on a good sound miss delay was very honest she said it's very simple at some point I, I played something for her and i expected to hear some kind of you know mentoring uh, uh advice so that i will fly after the lesson and she looked at me and she said you know honey it has to be in tune and it has to be with a good sound the rest is very subjective. I don't know what to tell you anymore else. Yeah. And at that time, I was a little bit agitated. I thought she's she's not serious. But she, like many people who were guests here, they said that she wouldn't say much, but it was very honest and it's very truthful. And it's really a, a core element. As, as you mentioned, you know, she's always had first prize winners of Queen Elizabeth, Tchaikovsky, uh, Indianapolis, all these people always they either studied with her before or they came to study with her afterwards right it was always back to basics it was always everybody came out with that sheet that she created which <laughs> was the nation articulation and i will never forget i won't say who but a winner of major international competition just one suddenly comes out after playing Sibelius concerto, which with, with the piece that this person won, comes out and has marked, I just looked over the, the sheet to see, and it's, you know, it was first moment articulation intonation, 
second <laughs> moment, second moment, sound, third moment, uh, again, intonation, articulation, sound, everything. <laughs> this person, I remember, I was like, oh my God. Beautiful, beautiful story. <laughs>